live on YouTube too. Uh, 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 like guys, give me a couple minutes. Couple minutes before we begin uh, today's virtual hands-on training. We're going to start in five minutes, y'all. This is a TMM academic class, all right? But I'm going to make it public to the YouTube community. Let y'all learn on what it looked like. As y'all see, we over here, we over there. And then they can see me over here. I'm just showing y'all what these academic classes going to start looking like. y'all is that my class starts at 12. Membership or members? Membership. The one that had Yeah. What's good, Brother Moses? Thank you. 
Hi, bro. Go ahead and start class. Okay. All right. Uh, welcome. Hold on. Let me uh, put this here for these guys. All right. I'd like to welcome TMM Academics. Good afternoon or good morning, wherever you at in the country or in the world. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. Let somebody else just thank you for the class. I'd like to thank everybody that's tuned in on TMM Academics. And I'd like to thank everybody that's watching via YouTube. Normally, these are private classes. But we're going to go ahead and open it up to the YouTube community a little bit so they can see what kind of uh, stuff is going on uh, behind the scenes. So with that out the way, we'd like to welcome you all to today's classes in regards to a Samsung electric dryer. Okay, in today's class, we're going to be doing disassembly. We're going to be doing part nomenclature, part identification. Any questions before we begin? I'd like to say a special shout out to everybody in attendance, both on YouTube and on Zoom. Since we have no questions out the way, I'd also like to speak on behalf of Richard Zilka, who is in attendance, and say thank you guys for being here. With that out the way, let's go ahead and uh, begin this assembly of the dryer. Very simple process. There are two screws located in the rear. Let me go ahead and show you that. They're located right here and right here. Once you do that, you can slide the top back, lift up. After you lift up, now the top is exposed. Do me a favor, can you carry this guy here? And then do this. Just show me. Um, I can't see what I. What. Can we do this? All right, hold on. Right there. Can you hold that like that? I have to see what what it's doing. Oh, then do this. Hold on. How about that? Yes, All, right. All right. So, uh, once we once we uh, uh, remove the cover. We'll have access to the user interface. There'll be a couple screws here. We want to go ahead and, and undo them. Bro, can you show them? I think somebody's trying to get in class, no? No, With this, you're gonna need a Phillips number two. Once you go ahead and remove all those, till it's back. There are some harnesses. Go ahead and, and, and please, you wanna go ahead and disconnect it here. And you also wanna go ahead and disconnect it here. Okay? Once you do that, very carefully and very gently, you wanna place this in the area that, you know, it's gonna be okay. Now that we've removed the user interface from the dryer, a couple things I'd like to point out here. This is our main board. This is the, 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 the cover that protects the main board. If you want to go ahead and do any uh, troubleshooting from the board, what you would do is remove that screw in. And now we would have access to troubleshooting from the board. Okay? Machine, bring me. Yeah, All right, so again, y'all, <clears throat> here's your main control board. <coughs> if you wanted to do any tests, 
This is where you would do them from. All right, so again, this is your main control board. Let's go ahead and, and continue. Can you guys please mute your mics, whoever is not muted? Thank you. Um, let's go ahead and continue the disassembly. Here's your power cable. We'll, we'll get into a little bit more with that. Give me a second. Let's go ahead and continue to... YouTube just timed out. Yeah. No battery. No, we good, bro. It's it's like no battery. Yeah, yeah, but we good. All right, so now that we got all these screws off, all right, now that we got all these screws out, let's go ahead and remove the door. What are you doing? Tell them what you're doing to get that. that huh? Show them that clip. The little clip that I pushed that down? Clip, yeah. Yeah, hold on. Okay. So, guys, one thing I want to show you with this. When you take this door off, it's not a lot of space for me to show y'all, but look, there's these two little metal tablets here. Just push down on them. Push down on them and it releases. And then once you do that, bear with me. Once you do that, the door, the door uh, switch will be right here. You want to unplug the, the harness from the door lock switch. Show me switch on the other side. Right here. Okay, that's your door switch. Okay, now that we got your door switch out, let's go ahead and take this guy off. Put him back. Gonna go ahead and gain access to the tub. Hey, Brandon. Yeah. What model are you working on? Oh, what brand? Samsung. Samsung. Okay, thanks. Model number Delta Victor Echo 45 Romeo 6100. Charging backslash alpha three. Thank you. You're welcome, brother. All right, so we got all that taken apart. You guys always want to remove this little one here, and then once you do all that, this is for you. Here's a here's a here's a a component, couple components we can start with. Drum roller wheels. You always want to make sure these spin freely. They're perfectly, uh, you know, round. They're not like octagon looking or flat on one side or like brittle. You always want to make sure these can spin freely and that they're perfectly round. Sounds good. These are your moisture sensor bars. These, uh, Here's the harness for them. These, these uh, detect moisture and they actually send a, a, a signal back to the board telling the board whether to stay on or, 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 or off longer. We'll get into testing that now. Main tub. Very simple. Brandon, mm. turn the drawer just a little bit so you're not right for the camera. Move that piece. Which piece? 
I just turn the dryer slightly so I can get what you're doing on the machine. Like this? No. Like this? Yeah. We're going to close? No, you don't have to come closer. Just you're right in front so they can't right. see what you're doing. Alright, cool. How's it looking now? How's it looking now? Looking good? Yeah. Alright. So now, let's go ahead and, and take the belt off. To look at the tub is very simple. You just want to do an inspection. You don't want to see no cracks coming down. <clears throat> you want to make sure the tub's in good shape. Look at the weld. You want to look at these felts. <clears throat> Inspect them for tears, rips. Look at them very carefully. This one looks in good shape. If they're starting to like sag off or be all ripped up, you may just want to get a new one with the glue and the adhesive, put it on, wait for it to cure and give the customer a good job. You wanna inspect these baffles, make sure that they're not cracked. Sometimes they get coins in them, they get little lint balls in them, and they make noise in the spin. If that happens, in order to gain access to these baffles, you will have to go to these screws over here. And once you remove these screws, these drum baffles will, will be released and it will allow you to uh, look inside, okay? As far as the drum, that's pretty much it in that respect. Now let's get into the, to the bolts and the mechanics of the unit. <clears throat> Here we have our blower housing. We have our motor. Two sets of thermostats. One is your thermistor, one's the thermal fuse. You have your heater element box, uh, your thermostats. Uh, we'll go ahead and test those. Your idler. You always want to make sure that the idler wheel itself is in good shape. It's not cracked, it's not making noise. You should be able to spin it and not hear anything. You want to ensure that your idler pulley tensioner spring also is in good shape because if this belt breaks it will open the circuit and it will prevent the, the, the motor from spinning so you want to make sure your tensioner is good here's your motor this valve uh, uh, this machine has a valve in it so it tells me it probably has steam or High, high end, high, some, some form of cleaning. Let's see, the steam's up Yeah, steam, yeah, 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 but you know, there was some, some little words. Steam's too nice of a thing to say. They call it smart gear or some fancy stuff. Okay, yeah, they, they call it steam sanitize. They got wrinkle prevent, eco dry. So they got a few uh, uh, multi-steam. So that's why we see the valve. This valve is very much like a valve inside of a refrigerator. It's electromechanically, uh, uh, an electromechanical component. Uh, mechanically, you have a, 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 a uh, solenoid, and electrically, you have a coil that energizes that. So, let's, you want to start that one as the first test? Let, let, let me point something out. Can you hold this one? Yeah. Point something out. Before we start taking stuff apart. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest problems that you're going to have with one of these Samsung dryers is this thermal cutout right here. This thermal cutout is controlling the heating element. That thermal cutout is higher than these two, uh, the temperature control components in here. This is a high limit thermostat. This one here is not supposed to be functioning when the dryer is running. It works as a safety. Brandon was telling you behind here, we'll show you in a little bit, there's a thermistor and a thermal cutoff here. But what happens is this fan, as it's running, it's pulling the air in and it's pulling the air negative, negatively through the heater from here into the drum, down the filter and back. So the thermistor here is what's telling the board what the temperature is. But let's just say we have a blocked vent here or behind the dryer, the hose is blocked. If there's a block in the ventilation, 
the thermistor here will not be able to see the temperature and will not cycle the heater on the proper temperature. So here we have a high limit thermostat. If we don't have proper airflow over here and this thermistor doesn't tell the board the temperature, this high limit thermostat is supposed to act as a safety and shut the heater off because the heat's going to be trapped over here. Now, if the high limit thermostat doesn't do its job or fails to, to maintain the temperature here, then the thermal cutoff will go. Thermal cutoff is one of the biggest failures. I do not remember the code, it's like E63 or E64. That thermal cutoff will fail. Um, I found that they, they sell that whole heater assembly on Amazon with the heating element, the high limit thermostat, and the cutoff for like 45, 50 bucks on Amazon. Uh, for my business, we buy a lot of them and, and we do replace a lot of them because that thermal cutoff failed. Now, if the thermal cutoff failed, you have to remember it failed because you have an airflow problem. If the airflow problem is not in the dryer, the customer's vent behind the dryer may be restricted or blocked, and that's what causes that to trip. So just changing that part and seeing that that heater's working doesn't mean you fix the dryer. You found the reason why the heater's not heating, but then you gotta figure out why did that thermal cutoff fail? Customer might need the vent clean. They may even be up as far as the roof that the vent is having a problem. So this here is, is the vent, and the thermistor back here, and I'm gonna go ahead and take them out. The thermistor back here is what is telling the board the temperature. Give me a second. Again, y'all, if y'all liking these kind of Saturday videos, please go on over to tmmacademics.com. We got our, our, our class over there. That's the, real, that's the real MVPs. Let's go ahead and give a shout out to the real MVPs tapped in. Lamar Station, uh, Trinity, Mo Says, Gas Ferry, Cynthia, DW, Ed. Those is the real MVPs right there, y'all. The guys tapped in and tuned in. Again, please go on over to tmmacademics.com. This won't be always on Saturdays for y'all. Go ahead, Rick, apologies. That's okay, so here are the two pieces that are on the back side of this blower assembly. And the one that's usually flat black plastic, this is a thermistor. This is not a switch. This is a resistor that senses the temperature of the air. And when heat passes over it here, the resistance value of this unit will change. And that's how the board knows the temperature. So this is what controls the temperature of the dryer. This tells the, the board, hey, it's 140 degrees, turn the heater off. So this is the one that maintains. Now this is a thermal fuse. This is in series with the motor. So if for some reason the heat is passing here and the thermistor is not working properly, the board doesn't see it, it's not cycling the heater off, this piece here will fail. And what will happen is it will break the circuit to the motor and the dryer won't start. So if your dryer doesn't run, one of the components you want to test is the thermal fuse. And this is the one that's usually located on the blower housing. Now go ahead and we'll take the heater out and then I'll let Brandon Wait, out. wait, wait, can I add one more sure. thing too? I like a story time. Can you please uh, hold this? Yeah. I have a story time. Let me interject a little bit of comedy into this and lighten up the mood. <laughs> Y'all know Brother B. Y'all know I, I ain't the sharpest knife in the barrel, but I'd like to elaborate a little bit on this thermistor. When I was uh, aspiring tech back in the days and I was first up and coming, yeah. You're blocking this camera here. So. Hold up, hold up. You know, I just got to learn the hold layer up, to layer now here. Once I learn the layer to layer, we in a good shape. Yeah. All right, so story time. So one day I had a dryer, right? And it had a thermistor like this, right? And when I was testing the components and I would test the switch, you know, I was super tech. I would go over to Ohm's. I would do my tech, my check, and I would hear this. And I would say, man, this thing is good. This ain't the problem. And then I would grab this guy, and I would go like this. And I would test, and I would test, and I wouldn't get any beep. And I'd say, yes, I found my problem. Man, it's gonna be X amount. I'll have it fixed in no time. I will go to the supply store and pick up one of these. I put it in, I put the unit all back together again, and it'd be another problem. 
And the reason is you never ever... Does anybody know why I did a read continuity on this? The, the answer is, is because you never read these with continuity. You always read them with ohms. Because if you read this with continuity, you're not going to get anything. Can you show my voltmeter? meter? Uh, I can't on the uh, All right, don't worry. TMM because... Don't well. worry. I just want to show them this. All right, look. So right now, I'm doing a, a, a ohm of a continuity, and I'm not getting anything. But watch what happens when I put it in ohms. All of a sudden, I get 10,000. I get 10K. Now I get 10K. So again, so again, if you try to do this test simply on continuity, here's what you're going to get. OL, which is an open line. But when you go ahead and you put it in ohms. What's your question? Somebody, somebody had a question. Okay. Does somebody have a question? All right, never mind. All right, so that's just a little quick tip. Never check your thermistors with continuity. Can everybody hear that? I'm gonna say that one more time. Never check thermistors with continuity. All right, Rick, the floor is yours. Hey, Rick, you got a question? Yes, sir. All right, so let's go back up. So that I understand, on the blower motor, you're gonna have the thermistor and the thermal fuse. And we're saying that the emitter is just the same as like a refrigerator. It's going to be the eyes and ears that go back to the control board to say, hey, here's what's happening with the heat and the air flow coming through. That's right, Stephen? 100 percent. Yes, sir. Right, thank you. Now remember, I always said thermistors are like your fingers, and the board is like your brain. So if the thermistor uh, changes value, just like your finger would notice how whether the water is hot or cold, that thermistor is telling the board if it's hot or cold. The thermal fuse is just a fuse, but the word thermal means that that fuse fails on temperature. So it's not like a, like a microwave fuse or a house fuse. The fuse, once it gets too hot, it opens up. Okay, so then my next question is, when it blows the fuse, right? Yes. Is it the fuse on the blower or is it the fuse on the heating element? Well, we have two different ones. Right now we're discussing the one on the blower. And if it's one on, a, one on a blower, there's really two things that could cause that. One, the operating thermal uh, thermistor is not working properly and we're overheating. Or I have seen that sometimes the heating element itself has grounded and part of the element's touching ground. So even though the thermostat's, or I'm sorry, the board's trying to turn the heater on and off, part of the heater's staying on all the time. It's getting power through one side and going to ground. And so the board's trying to shut it off, but the board is only one side of the heating element. So that causes excessive heating and it'll blow that thermal fuse. So the way to really check it is when you go there and you say thermal fuse is bad, I disconnect the wires from this thermal fuse here. I take the wires off the thermal fuse and I jump them out and I run the dryer. But what I do is I test the dryer for the temperature. What temperature is the coming out of the back of the dryer? If I'm exceeding 160 degrees, like 160, 165 degrees, then I got a problem with controlling my temperature, and I'll have to check that out. Because remember, when fuses blow, fuses blow for a reason. They blow either because uh, something shorted or something overheated, okay? So this here will take out the motor, and if this goes bad, the dryer won't run. Any questions on that? No, okay. So now we're going to get down. Let me lower this uh, camera just a little bit so you guys can get a better view inside the, the machine as we're doing it. Now we're going to do what? Some testing? Uh, we're going to take the element out and show the other components on the element, and then Brandon will show you how to test them, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to remove the element. These two terminals here, the blue and the red, this is the actual heating element. You can see the element right here. We'll pull it out so you can see it closer. This is the high limit thermostat in the middle. Take those wires off. And then the thermal cutoff, it's a lot smaller. Now let me take out this one screw here. 
got a second one in here. All right, so now we got the heating element assembly here. You can, I'm gonna bend this down just so you can see. You can see the coil heater inside the unit. We have the high limit thermostat and the thermal cutoff. Now, when you look at thermostats, if you had like a bunch of them in a box and you say, well, how do I know if the thermostat's a high limit thermostat or an operating thermostat? On this thermostat, uh, sorry, we got the green screen set up here, so that's why you see some fading. If you look at the temperature there, the temperature's listed with the letter L, and it'll say 200, uh, 60. 260 right there. That's so it. most most high limit thermostats are about 220 to 260. So a high limit thermostat is 220, 260, and operating thermostats between 130 and 160. So if you look at it, the L is the limit, which is posted on there, and I'll show it one more time. The L on that thermostat's the limit at which it, it cycles. And then the minus 50 is like, it cuts off at 260, but comes back on at 210. So this only acts as a safety. Now, if this one fails, this one here will be a fuse. This one is almost 300, 325 degrees. And if this one fails, the heater's off, never comes back on. The thermostat's just a switch. It'll open and close on temperature but its purpose is to make sure we don't get a fire because if we're exceeding that kind of temperature here, it's probably because we're not getting enough airflow over the heater so that heater uh, works properly. So grounding the heaters, we can put one terminal here and the other side, you can see this heater in there. If that heater touches the metal anywhere in there about halfway through the heater, half of it can still work even though the relay on the board will cycle it off. And that's usually one of the indications. It doesn't happen so much on these Samsungs, but the, but the old Whirlpool dryers, the, the regular Whirlpool dryers, they went from a long heater to a short heater where you can remove it from the back. Those would ground out constantly and they would take out the thermal fuse on the dryer. Techs would go, change the thermal fuse, dryer would run and start heating, customer would call them back the next day and say, hey, it stopped working again. So you need to make sure that if any of your thermal fuses fail, whether it's the one on the element or the one on the exhaust, make sure you check the running temperatures of the dryer at the back, at the back of this vent that comes out of the back of the dryer. Make sure you check the running temperature there and make sure that it's cycling at the temperature we want. So now I'm going to let Brandon show you how to test these components. All right. There you go, young man. Let me get on the other side. I'll grab yeah, it. Y'all go ahead and please hit the like button. Again, if y'all enjoying this kind of contact, please content, please go on over to tmmacademics.com where we do this every other week. We do virtual training like this. Please go on over there. there you go. Richard, I had a question that came in on one of the comments from the YouTube community. I don't know if you want to answer it. Sure, what's up? The gentleman wanted to, to, to and his question was exactly why is it that certain meters don't pick up on continuity, but will pick up on the ohms. I I would answer it, but go ahead. Go ahead. Just I would say that um, look at the um, every every voltmeter comes with a with a uh, uh, like a, a specification sheet, and on it every meter is different. It'll tell you up to how many ohms, uh, how many uh, ohms uh, continuity that that. Uh, feature will allow you to, to, to use. Some will give you like 100, some will give you 200, but that's about it. So um, I'll tell you, refer to your, your, your uh, voltmeter specification um, sheet. And, and no more important, the difference between continuity and, and ohms. What I tell people, like continuity just simply means that from point A to point B, it, it's good. It's a good trace, it's a good trail, and there's nothing impeding it. What the difference between continuity and ohms is, ohms would tell me how far, what is the distance, what is the resistance from point A to point B, as opposed to, you know, one means, yeah, I'm good to go, the other one just tells me how long. So that, that's kind of like the way I see ohms and continuity. Well, remember, a thermistor, even though we say the resistance value of the thermistor changes on temperature, it's not an actual resistor. 
Uh, I don't know the, the makeup of it, and I will research it for the next class, but it may actually work more like a diode, and if the resistance is high enough, a continuity test does not pass enough current through it um, to, to have the meter read just a continuity test. What, when a meter works on ohms, the meter sends, sends voltage through that circuit, and that's how the meter gets a reading. It uses the meter's battery to give you a reading. Now, when you're checking ohms, that most batteries, they, they gauge how much voltage they pass through in order to mathematically convert it into a resistance reading. Show, show them this part. Hey, y'all, look, to take this heat element out is <clears throat> relatively simple. You got to take those thermostats out, and then you got to remove all these screws. Now, if you buy that one kit on Amazon, it comes with that box and everything. You just pull it out like I did and throw a new one in, and then keep these other parts if you need to replace just one of those parts in another customer's home. What'd you say? <laughs> What's up, Lil' Raw? He says a good truck stock item. Yeah, look. All right, y'all, so here's y'all heating element right here. Okay. Here's the heating element. In order, th this is what it looks like while it's inside of the, uh, the box. Let's go ahead and, and, and check our, our heater element for uh, ohms here. Now, Sean, I think on those terminals, yeah. on the outside, they're, they're bent just a little bit, so they slide out of the ceramic. They are. Show, show them those little pieces. Uh, let, me, let me get a flat head there. Well, show them before you bend it. Yeah, well, the, the Whirlpool, that Whirlpool machine is built by Samsung. So that fault code and that, that item, it's the same part number. Uh, just, uh, like, yes. just like GE and LG, a lot of their components are the same. So what we want to look at is we want to look right here on these terminals. They bend these terminals just slightly. A little needle nose would be Let, good. That, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it off you. Hold on. I didn't see. We didn't, we, um, we got needle noses. They're in one of the, the second drawer on the left. More pair of pliers. Show them how you're doing it. Basically, the only thing you do is here's the little here's the little um, spade. Basically, it comes in right through here, just like so. Can can these guys see it? Yeah. Yeah, if you guys can't see it, just like know. this, right? But what happens is right around here, they bend it a little bit, like like so. Bending that, that keeps the terminal from sliding out of that ceramic insulator there. So if you're just changing the element, not the whole assembly, you have to bend them just a little bit so that the, the terminal doesn't slide out. Otherwise, you've got to plug a wire in and slide out and it'll, it'll damage the element. So basically, it's like locking that terminal in place. Now, you don't have to go as far as and replace that whole... It ain't going to win a beauty contest, but you can see like how I bent it back a little bit. Yeah. Now, you don't have to take it apart as you, you want if you buy the you, whole you, The only thing you want to be able to do is this. That you pull on it, and it doesn't slide back out. You don't want that. You don't want it to slide back, you know, into the housing. All right? So now, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and do the test. Check it for ohms. Anytime you do this test, always bring your voltmeter to get your leads like so. And here's why, because if you don't plug your voltmeter all the way in and you do this, you're going to say, oh, I have a bad heater element, go pull one in and it's not the heater element. Always ohm your, your leads out first, then go on ohms and then take your measurement. Nine point six. Show them that, Richard. Uh, they, I, I think they can see it. You guys can see that? They can see the 9.6. <laughs> I can't bring the yeah, camera. Okay. All right, cool. 
Yeah, it should be about right. Yeah, it's right there. So 9.6, we know we got a good uh, 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 heater element. To elaborate on what Richard was saying about testing it to, to the box, how you would do that is you basically would just come to your your leads. You go to continuity on that one. Yeah, that one you can go continuity. Move your meter, I can't see it. Sure. Move it closer Hold to on, let me put the light so they can see the numbers. Maybe they can see better now. So what you would do is you would go to one leg and then you will go to the actual hall. Nothing, that's great. No continuity, that's great. Again, if you get continuity, then that means that your element is actually touching the, the chassis. That's why you're getting uh, ohms from the element. Yeah, so this is a good heater element, guys. Anything you wanna add on that? No, nope. we'll check the thermostat and the thermal cutoff. Now guys, what we haven't told you is that this dryer does have a problem in it. Today we're going to do a breakdown of the entire machine and next class we're going to, we, we need to get the electrical set up so we can do it. We're going to do an actual voltage troubleshooting of this dryer and troubleshoot why this dryer is not working. Okay? What do you want to test now? The thermostat and the thermal cutoff. Ah. Okay. The high limit thermostat, the thermal cutoff? Let me just make sure. You can do it right on the table here. Just, just move your keyboard out of the way. And let me just see if I can, I can see both of them here. Yeah. I don't think they can see it. They can't? Who can't? I can't. Move right it. there, they can see it. They should see be the meter to too? Right All right. Again. These are uh, temperature regulated components. So to further expand on what Richard was saying, these fail due to temperature issues, okay? So let's go ahead, again, check these components. Let's make sure that our voltmeter is good. Okay, let's go ahead. You can leave this test on, on continuity. That's a good thermostat. Let's check this one here. If you guys see a reading, it's less than one ohm. It's like a tenth or two tenths of an ohm. This is That's a good, good. Those are good readings for both. Good those readings. Components. All right. Let's go ahead and um, uh, expand on that, that valve back there. Guys, if you've never taken one of these off, they're relatively easy. What you gotta do is, you gotta like take the hose and like push it in as far as you can and then the little uh, tab, push it back and then pull. So what you wanna do is push in, hold the tab and pull out. All right. That's called a John Guess fitting because I don't know, a guy named John Guess invented the fitting um, and basically like he said you push the hose in and then there's a little collar there we'll show you the collar in the close-up and while you're holding the collar the hose will just slide right out to put it back in all you do is just shove the hose in until it stops and it locks in place you don't have to do anything else so show them the John gets fitting up close Okay, so here you guys go. Sure. Yeah. Any? That's a good idea. Okay, well, what? what? We'll also have the tech sheet available when we do the troubleshooting, okay? Uh, yeah. We're, we're still trying to learn how we're going to record this, how we're going to make sure that you guys can see it, um, and we're still waiting for the guy to set up the internet here. This is all being streamed from my cell phone, so we're trying our best to make this thing work. But thank you. 
All right, so again, here's our, our valve. If you look carefully on there, some nomenclature. It's a 110, 60 hertz. So let's go ahead and, and, and check this guy. Very simple. Wanna go ahead and bring your, your you wanna visually, you wanna inspect the screen. You wanna inspect the screen, make sure it's not deposit, it's not hard water buildup or, or anything like that. Um, it's not recommendable to try to like clean it out. You may puncture the, the little screen or the filter, you may mess it up. So if it's too bad and you see yourself trying to dig it out, it's probably just best to get another one. Um, here are the two solenoids. In order to conduct this test, what you'd have to do is a uh, ohms test. So again, let's put our voltmeter on ohms. What we're gonna do is we're gonna test from one to two and from three to four. Thank you, sir. And that should be a couple of hundred ohms. Uh, 984. 984. 984 ohms, guys. All right, let's check this one. 975. Okay, I want to I want to add a couple of things. First sure. of all, sel solenoids or water valves. When you go to test them, um, I'm gonna come here to the camera so sure. you can see a little sure, better. Sure, sure, sure. When you go to test these water valves out, they can show good resistance, and you say, hey, but the water valve is still not working. You really want to check voltage to the solenoids and make sure that they're getting power because. Even though they got ohms, there's mechanical pieces in here that control the flow of the water. So if we're having an issue with the water flow, the solenoid can be open, but the valve itself is clogged up and not letting the water out. So that's why Brandon said when this screen clogs up, that debris can also get inside these two valves. Now this is that John Guest fitting this little um, uh, blue piece here. And you can see, I'm gonna try to pull on it just a little bit so you can see this piece comes up. When you shove the hose in there, it locks in place. Now, when he, uh, where did you do that little safety clip? Oh, here it is. So before he took it off, not all of them have this little piece. It's a little safety piece here. And when the hose is in, it sort of like keeps that piece from moving. Because of the vibration of the dryer, they don't want that hose to slip out, that maybe the vibration will cause the John Guest to let loose. So he had to remove this first, and then he pushed the hose in, and then while he pushed the hose in, he held this down while he pulled the hose out. So when you go to remove it, you hold this, the, the actual John gets fitting down to pull it out. Water valves on refrigerators also use these uh, to hold on to the nylon hoses, okay? You can put copper fittings in these. They will hold as well. But it's very important that the copper fitting be uh, the, the copy pipe be actually completely round. If it is not completely round, it's egg shaped, it will leak, okay? So you can use copper on John Guest fittings, but you wanna make sure that the copper is clean and round. And those of you guys that went to the class, we showed you how to cut copper and make sure that that thing's round before you work with it. Okay, next. Should I take the door switch? Oh man, we got a lot of um, comments, bro. Let's say what's up to a couple people, you mind? Sure, and then read some of the comments in case someone got questions. Yeah. All right, so for the academic community, I'm gonna ask y'all to be a little patient. Let's go ahead and show a little love to the YouTube world here. Okay, what's good? BK from the Rockies, Dale Scott, Joe Hernandez, Sagaponics, Let's Fix That Appliance, Acclaimed Appliance, Fix it, Felix. Okay, we do got a uh, question. question. Uh, I don't know if this is a question or a comment, but Asho Ryer says, 86 says, resistance of the component has to be low enough for the continuity to flow from the meter. A thermistor is a form of resistor, so it doesn't allow the continuity to flow. When the temperature changes on the thermistor, the resistance will vary. It will change. You can read a resistance. Basically, it's just yeah, like NTC. Yeah, okay. 
All right, great, 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 uh, great, great uh, comments there, guys. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for y'all feedback. All right, you want to uh, finish up? We only got a couple more. Just minutes. show them where the steam comes in the dryer in the back there on the bulkhead. It's right here. You see the, the nozzle there? Ah, right here, this guy. Uh, there you go. We should actually take this apart. You have to take this off, though. Nah, uh, we only got 10 more minutes. I think this is a good stopping point, bro. Well, let's go with the door switch. All right, let's do door switch. The belt switch. The belt switch is on this one? Yeah, the belt switch is right here. But I can't see it with the YouTube, with the TMN camera. Well, the belt switch is right down there. So how are we going to show them that? Bring the dryer closer so I can get the Let me... Guys, give me a second. I'm going to disconnect the camera from the tripod here so I can uh, show you the belt switch and how, to, how that works. I don't even know how to disconnect this thing. And I put it on here the other day. And while he's doing that, let me go ahead and take this off so I can show you guys the holes going to that uh, uh, steam, uh, that valve. Bear with me. Give me one second there, guys. All right. You got some, you got some, you got some, you put some light down there. All right, guys. So right in here is what we call a belt switch. Can you see that in the camera there? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so the belt switch is activated by the tensioner pulley. So... When, when the belt is not connected, it's activating the switch here. When the belt is on the drum, the switch is not being activated. So this is a normally closed switch. When the belt breaks, it hits that lever on that switch there. And if you listen to the click, okay, when it hits that switch, it opens up this contact and will be open for the board and say, hey, the belt's broken, the dryer will not start. So if you look at the two color wires here, we have a pink and a brown wire. So if we came up here to the board, and we look at the board here, I see some wires disconnected here, so we're gonna have to figure out what, what, what happened here. Uh, we'd have to find the pink and the brown wire on this board here, and uh, I don't have the schematic, so. It's back here. Um, it, it didn't come with the diagram, so we'll have to get the diagram for the next class. But I think the pink is this one here um, on the board here. Can you see the pink one next to the yellow? Yeah. Go, go this way. Okay, well. okay, let's just say the belt is connected to the dryer. And you open up the top, you can see if the belt's functioning because it would be on the top of the drum. And if it's tight, then we know the belt is good. So if, if the belt is tight, but we still think the belt switch is bad. We can ohm out the belt switch right from the board and not have to take the whole machine apart just to check the belt switch. So uh, like Trinity said, we'll have a schematic and we're gonna show you all these test points and how we test specific components right from the board without having to take the whole machine apart. Um, oh, oh my, um, oh, I'm gonna take this off so I can show them the uh, steam. Remember you wanted to see that? Yeah, some of those fan motors, one of the two guys said that he had a bear of a time trying to get that fan out. And they are slightly difficult. There you go, right there, look. So what he's showing you is the hose. That um, goes to the valve. Why this is for the steam. Why don't you show them how, to, how that hose on the... Wait, 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 don't put it back. Put it back. Show them the John Guest fitting and how you activate it with the hose there. All right, hold on. Lay it down and... and no, no, I got to take one more screw out there. All right. Okay, he's going to show you how that John Guest fitting worked on, on the water valve. All right, so here it is here, a little bit of a better example. And we can't see the hose from here. You got to... No, right here, right here. I, I, it's too far away. How's this? I can't see it because it's facing away. Just do the water valve on the hose now. Brother, this is the same thing. But it's facing... It's got to be facing me. Okay. Is this better? Yeah, they, they can see that. Okay, guys, so uh, 
Here you go. Basically, again, you wanna push on the blue, the little blue tab, right? And push your holes in at the same time. Now, once you have everything pushed inward and you're holding this little blue tab, right? You're, let me give you an example of what I mean holding it. You're holding it. You're holding it. And you're pushing in at the same time. And then with, while you're holding here and you're pushing in, pull out. And that's how it comes out. Now, can you just see, watch, he sticks it in and now it's locked in. He can't pull it out now. But the, how I bypass that, I pull down on that blue tab while I pull the holes out. You guys see that? One more time. All right. And then that, like Brother Rick was saying, travels up through here, which is where the steam enters. Right there onto the drawer. I think this can stop. It's on the hour. All right, guys. It's 12. It's uh, coming up on the hour here. Uh, and let's stop for any questions for the uh, TMM Academic Community. And then we'll open up for the YouTube. Anybody from TMM Academics got any questions? We're going to stop for today. We'll resume in two weeks <clears throat> where we'll have power and we'll actually conduct live tests. We'll actually test the terminal block, check polarity, check proper voltage. We'll do live continuity or uh, live uh, motor checks and uh, please do tune in next uh, next time we do one of these. you have anything? We'll be checking from the board too. Like how to... Yeah, we'll be doing tests from the board as well. We'll be testing from the board. We'll be testing from the board. Any questions? Oh, there is a message in the chat there. There's a message? All right, hold on. I didn't see the chat. I'm going to go. So, okay. chat says... What brand is being worked okay, on? Okay, no, we answered that. Yeah, we answered that. Okay, okay. I got an Okay. Um, so, let me ask my question. You guys are facing the motor goods. Um, how, how do you even take those off? Um, okay. You know, sometimes I get that, and it's like, I think they're like, difficult to get off of it. Like, the roller? What do you do? Very simple. No, no, no problem. This is how I do mine, brother. I, 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 get, I get normally like a little flat hand. Hold on. I'll show you how I do mine, brother. Whirlpool has a completely triangular one. This one is like, do this one here. I'll hold this. What I do is I basically just get in there. And I just get it over the shaft. Bear with me, y'all. Like I said, I come in at a little angle. I pop, I pop, and I pop. So I come in from here. Push it down so I can see here. how it locks on. That's how it locks in place. So, so when I come with a flathead or something, I try to get it off that little lip, you see? Get it off until boom. You see that little groove on the shaft? There's what that piece is locked into. So you just take a small flat screwdriver and pry that away from that groove and it should come out. Okay, I don't know where I'm going to have to find it. Any, oh, there it goes back there. Any other questions? Yeah, next question. So you talked about earlier about temperatures in the dryer. I know someone mentioned before that I guess like Red Food has a kit that you can put in to see if their dry temperatures are, are good. Is that like the recommended way to do it? Um, um, checking, temp that. checking temperature is usually done just with that little pocket thermometer. It's round and you know, you, a lot of AC technicians, you're pretty sure you funny. <laughs> Some guys use the laser uh, temperature. They're a lot more expensive. Um, but the little round one is the one I usually do. And I just put it right in the exhaust, and I want to check the temperature at the exhaust in the back of the dryer here. Right when the air comes out, you want to check the temperature here. Okay, I guess you're looking for there, because it would vary from what's inside, right? Well, you want to just make sure you don't have a max temperature of 160. Can you just give me one second? Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just give me one second.
All right, y'all, so there y'all have it. This is another episode of TMM Academics. Uh, again, if you want uh, training like that on um, every other Saturday, please go on over to tmmacademics.com. Please enroll, and we look forward to bringing you guys videos like this, okay? I want to thank y'all for being here on Saturday. Love, peace, and harmony. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Don't forget, we have refrigerator repair class in October. Please go over to tmlacademics.com backslash hands-on training and enroll and then come out here and start learning how to do work on these bad boys. You know what I'm saying? But until then, in the meantime, in between time, I'm your host with the most brother B. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. Love, peace, and harmony. It's a problem. I don't want to fix it. So we haven't even tested it out.